Hey guys, welcome back to the midi-chlorine experience. Today's video is going to cover why Luke's skills were able to progress so quickly from episode 5 to episode 6, and looking at what it means to be strong in the Force. Going into Return of the Jedi, Luke doesn't exactly have a good track record for success. Luke! Luke's crazy! He can't even take care of himself, much less rescue anybody. <laughs> I don't like you either. I have you not. Man, please. Leia. Power converters. That's two you owe me, Junior. <laughs> but when we see him in Return of the Jedi, he is a confident, stoic Jedi Knight. He is more in the moment and more self-aware of his shortcomings, and is taking active steps to correct them and improve himself. Like when he makes a plan to save his friends from Jabba, instead of recklessly rushing in like he did on Cloud City or going into that dangerous lair without his weapons as he should have on Dagobah. The whole sequence at Jabba's palace shows us without letting the audience know outright Luke's character development and how he has grown as a man. And the beginning of the movie shows us that, unlike the previous films, Luke is now capable of standing on his own when everyone else takes a back seat to the action as he is the one to rescue his friends instead of needing to be saved by them. I owe you one. Luke's learned to prepare before entering a situation. He's learned to trust himself and in the Force, and not rely on weapons, and he is a capable warrior as he is the only one to do any fighting during the adventure on Tatooine. To understand why Luke was able to progress so quickly in skill, from Episode 5 to Episode 6, we need to look at the nature of what it means to have a strong connection to the Force, and to understand that Luke himself had the same supernaturally strong connection to the Force as his father, the Chosen One, Anakin Skywalker. With the new Clone Wars series and the creation of Ahsoka, I thought they were setting her up to explain some of Luke's skill progression seen in Episode 6, by giving her an opportunity to meet the son of her master and help him grow as a Jedi. First things first, let's discuss where Luke has come from before the start of Episode 6. Luke first started learning how to feel the Force in Episode 4 when he was on board the Millennium Falcon, training with Obi-Wan. He picks it up quickly after some failure, and learns how it feels to reach out and connect to the Force. He then is able to let the Force enhance his reflexes and gain clairvoyance, like the Jedi in the prequels could, and is able to block incoming blaster shots while blindfolded. Feeling the Force and connecting with it was easy to do because with such a strong connection to the Force, it is easier to feel than if you didn't have a strong connection, and there wasn't as much of the Force flowing through you. At the climactic battle of Yavin, Luke is able to tap into that same feeling to let the Force guide his hand and make a successful bombing run on the Death Star, destroying the entire battle station. In Episode 5, Luke is in the Wampa Cave when he uses the Force to move his lightsaber, demonstrating that he has learned to control the Force with more conscious effort while training on his own in the three-year gap between 4 and 5. Luke demonstrates capability and quick thinking during the Battle of Hoth, coming up with a plan to stop the AT-AT assault, but doesn't make use of the Force again until he is on Dagobah. Luke trains with Yoda and learns more about the Force and how to use telekinesis to move objects with his mind. He also undergoes physical training, and presumably some lightsaber practice. I say presumably because there is a deleted scene of Luke with Yoda on his back and lightsaber drawn trying to cut some objects in midair, but there is no such scene in the actual movie, so we won't count it necessarily. Luke then goes to Cloud City and fights Darth Vader. Vader is holding back during this whole fight as he treats it as an audition for Luke to see what his son is capable of. Luke fights for keeps, though, as he tries to fight the man who is a powerful imperial figure, the killer of both his father and his mentor, and the one who imprisoned his friends. While Luke is still able to defend himself, his training does not yield anything resembling victory. We get a small sliver of hope at the end when he is able to land a hit on Vader, but it is immediately thrown away. <laughs> As soon as Vader makes the decision to end the fight, the fight ends. Vader could have done this at any time, but wanted to test his son. At this point, Luke is only still learning to use his abilities and is far from being a competent Jedi Knight. In Episode 6, Luke demonstrates a greater capability. He uses mind tricks, flips around, uses telekinesis, and makes good use of his lightsaber. <laughs> We see that Luke is definitely more capable in this movie, and it is understandable given that there is roughly a year time gap between the two movies, and this gives our hero some time to train and expand on the lessons he's learned from Obi-Wan, Yoda, and from his fight with Vader. 
Luke is able to demonstrate feats comparable to what we see Jedi Knights in the prequels do. <laughs> He is not as flashy or swift as Jedi are in the prequels, given that George Lucas wanted to show a power progression from movie to movie and trilogy to trilogy, showing that in the original trilogy there were old men, crippled old half-men, and young men who had been trained by these debilitated old men. To then go to the prequels, where it was the Jedi at the height of their potential, and studying of what can be done with the Force, essentially showing Jedi fighting in the prime of the Jedi. If you want to see more of George Lucas talking about that, there is a behind-the-scenes video from the making of Episode 1 called Prime of the Jedi, where George Lucas and Nick Gillard talk about this very thing. I think you can find it here on YouTube if you search Prime of the Jedi. Despite the difference in choreography, Luke deflects blaster fire, leaps great heights, and solos an entire mercenary army just like we see the Jedi do in the prequels. He then fights Darth Vader, who, while hampered by his prosthetic limbs and diminished force abilities, is still a foe to be reckoned with. Luke demonstrates a good amount of skill and is even able to, while tapping into the dark side, overwhelm the emotionally conflicted Vader and pummel him into submission. It's important to note that Luke may not have had what it takes to beat Vader if he were going serious, but that his abilities were far above what they were on Bespin, and that Luke was now meeting Vader as an equal. Luke's progression is obvious, but not beyond the realm of possibility. Luke isn't crushing AT-ATs with the Force or casting Force lightning that can destroy ships. But again, one of the biggest things to remember is that Luke's connection to the Force is on par with his father, Anakin Skywalker. So says George Lucas. Anakin Skywalker had the strongest connection to the Force of any character in Star Wars. Online, he is frequently referred to as the Space Jesus of Star Wars, and his power transcends the natural limit, which we will call Natty Limit going forward. Natty is a meme term in the online fitness world distinguishing the difference between people who train with performance-enhancing drugs and those who don't. Those who don't use PEDs are Natty, and those who do use PEDs are not. The natty limit is essentially the top end of what a naturally born force sensitive would be capable of achieving. As a child, Anakin's connection to the force was unquantifiable at over 20,000 and being above Yoda. Yoda being a paragon character and the Grand Master of the Jedi Order would represent the peak of natty force users as a counterpart to Sidious, who is also at the top of the natty limit for the dark side. So traditionally born force sensitives would only ever be able to top out at this level, barring special circumstance or rituals used to enhance one's power in the force, like those in the fitness world who use PEDs. If Anakin, being born by supernatural means, and as such with supernaturally strong power, had achieved his full potential, he would have been twice as strong as the Emperor and twice as strong as Yoda, so says Lucas. But after sustaining his injuries on Mustafar, his power was capped at about 80% of what the Emperor was capable of, and that, coupled with his dependence on the circuitry in his suit and their vulnerability to Force Lightning, made it so he was never able to overthrow the Emperor as he had planned to. Being that Anakin was born of the Force itself as a force of balance to rid the galaxy of the rising dark side and slap down the Sith Order, his power in the Force is unnaturally much higher than anyone else's. This doesn't mean Anakin is a Gary Stew who has a bunch more power off the bat than anyone else. He still has to work for it, undergoing years of Jedi training, and even then, he still isn't invincible. <laughs> Anakin's potential in the Force is far, far higher than anyone else. If Anakin had achieved his full potential, he would have been twice as strong as the Emperor and twice as strong as Yoda. What being strong in the Force means in a practical sense is that a person with a strong connection to the Force is like having a natural talent. As an example, a naturally talented artist will be able to progress a lot faster than someone who isn't naturally talented. So Anakin, with his unnaturally strong connection to the Force, can progress to council level and be able to compete with Dooku after only 10 years. Dooku, who is able to compete with Yoda himself, who again is at the top of the pyramid. It is obvious that this contest cannot be decided by our knowledge of the Force. While someone like Obi-Wan needs to work harder to become as strong as he is. But talent doesn't beat hard work when talent doesn't work hard. Anakin has more natural talent, but hard work makes an experienced master. 
I talked about this in my video on why the dark side isn't stronger. I'll link it at the end of the video. Go watch that and let me know what you think. The point of this is that Luke possesses the same connection to the Force as Anakin, being that he and his twin sister Leia are the direct descendants of the Chosen One, and are thus able to share in that same supernatural power, essentially being juiced Force-sensitives. While the descendants of Luke and Leia would still be quite strong in the Force, they might lose that supernatural status and fall back into the Natty status, topping out around Yoda or Sidious level. This strong connection means Luke has a natural talent and is thus able to progress a lot quicker, like a naturally talented painter learning to hold a brush and put it to canvas for the first time, he finds he has a shorter learning curve than someone who doesn't have that natural talent. The bigger the natural talent, the faster the progression. The stronger the connection to the Force, the faster the progression. As an extension of a strong connection to the Force, we can actually look at midi-chlorians. Midi-chlorians may not get talked about much, but if we examine the Jedi statement, May the Force be with you, we can actually reconcile natural talent with the Jedi practice of self-control. Midichlorians reside in all living cells and are thus a part of our bodies. Being in tune with the Force is then an extension of self-control. Control over your body down to the cellular level. Saying, may the Force be with you, is essentially wishing someone a heightened level of self-control, in line with the Stoic practices of the Jedi, who seek not to be ruled by their emotions they experience, but rather bring them to heal so that they can live their lives in control of themselves, rather than acting from emotion. It is also akin to saying, peace be with you, working as a wish of good fortune for the recipient, that the receiver lives in this symbiosis and harmony that all life forms participate in, and that the Jedi themselves seek to foster. So to tie up this little tangent, the Force and the midichlorians are part of us, and so learning to control them is an extension of controlling ourselves. Going back to Luke, ever since her creation, I thought Ahsoka's character arc might end with her helping the son of her master. I had an idea in my head that Luke would be distraught and aimless after the revelation that he is the son of Vader, and would be worried that he would be doomed to fall to the dark side too. Leia and Chewie would be putting pressure on Luke to go kick down Jabba's doors, but then Luke would hear a report of a Jedi and go in search of them, where he would then encounter Ahsoka. Learning that he is the son of Anakin, she would be able to teach Luke some moves and techniques that would serve to explain his skill increase. Luke would also learn from Ahsoka what his father was like as Anakin Skywalker, and could even be the inspiration for Luke wanting to redeem his father when he realizes what kind of man his father used to be. Possibly even with her dying breath, after a short mission together where she could tell him that if he sensed conflict in Vader during their fight on Cloud City, then he should make the effort to try to reach him. Her death would also solidify Yoda's statement to Luke in Return of the Jedi when he says, What God am I? The last of the Jedi will you be? Really bringing the story full circle that Luke has the hope of the whole galaxy on his shoulders going into his confrontation with the two Sith Lords. After learning what kind of charismatic, caring man his father was, would strengthen his conviction to redeem his father and not want him to be destroyed, as Yoda and Obi-Wan tell him. This side adventure would also help explain why it took a year for them to break Han out of Jabba's palace. But that's just some fan fiction. I can narrate a more fleshed out version of that story if there's interest, or maybe I'll leave it to Star Wars Theory. Let me know in the comments, or even let him know, since he could probably animate something like that. The reason Luke is able to progress so quickly like his father Anakin, who gained power to rival some lifelong Jedi Masters after only a decade of training, is because Luke shares the same connection to the Force as his father. This connection to the Force is supernaturally strong, beyond the natty limit, and it shortens their learning curve. A strong connection to the Force works like a natural talent. Those who are naturally gifted will progress faster than those who are not. But like Anakin, this natural ability doesn't mean much without training. All because of your training. Cultivate your own natural talents in life and grow where you are strong and work on areas where you are weak so that you can achieve your own potential. Like a Jedi following the will of the Force, find your talent and the river will carry you. Well, this concludes my thoughts on why Luke was able to progress so quickly. If you like what I had to say, click the like button down below, subscribe for more of my content, which will be coming soon, and if you want to find out when that is, click the little bell icon down below so you don't miss the next one. Thanks for sticking around, and I'll see you all next time. May the Force be with you.